subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon to never miss any update. Hello everyone, here I am to present lesson 1.9 for SSC CGL paper discussion of quantitability for the paper which was taken on 30th November 2016. And in this lesson, I will be discussing question number 81 to question number 19. So let us read question number 81 and see how it can be done. It says if the parallel sides of a trapezium are 8 cm and 4 cm and M and N are the midpoints of the diagonals of the trapezium, then what is the length of M? And let us see what and how the diagram will look like. So this is the diagram. This is the parallel sides 4, 8, diagonal this and this is the diagonal and these are the midpoints and we have to just find this particular length. So there is a very standard formula to get it out that MN is equal to half of difference of parallel side that is 8 minus 4 and you actually get it to be 2 centimeter. There is one more way where you need not to know actually the formula. You can do it without knowing it even right without knowing even the formula you can solve it. Just the only thing is that you just know that in trapezium two are parallel sides and two are non-parallel side that's it. But I will be discussing that approach later on when the series will be over I will take few discussions on geometry might be and there I will be explaining how it can be done orally without even knowing the formula. Question number 82 now. In triangle ABC which is isosceles where AB is equal to AC angle A is given to be 40 degrees, bisector PO and OQ of the exterior angles ABD and ACE formed by producing BC on both sides meeting at O, then what is the value of angle BOC? So this is what diagram will look like ABC where angle A is 40 degree. This is the bisector of this exterior angle ACE, bisector of this exterior angle ABD with the red color. This red and blue bisectors are meeting at point O. You also call this point is X center. If you remember the terminology, this is known as X center. Like in center, this is X center. And there is very standard expression for this even that this value BOC angle is actually 90 degree minus A by 2. So you can simply say it will be 90 degree minus 20 degree is equal to 70 degree and that's how you can easily mark it. So in this particular question or even the previous question there are some standard results and you know similar question have been asked multiple times in CGL paper. So it is not something which is challenging you can easily do it if you remember these expressions. Question number 83. An equilateral triangle of side 6 centimeter is inscribed in a circle then the radius of the circle is. I can mark it directly to be 2 root 3 because this is not a new question. They are asking it for the second time in the same paper. Where they ask for the first time that there is an equilateral triangle with side 6 cm what will be AG? Even at that point I told you if you remember that the circumradius is going to be equal to AG and here they are asking the same question. They are saying there is a circle an equilateral triangle is inscribed in it or you can say this circle is actually circumscribing this equilateral triangle. So what will be this? What will be this? The radius of the circle is nothing but here the circumradius that you already know 2 by root 3 is the circumradius of the standard equilateral triangle that you know here it will be 2 by root 3 into 3 because the side is 6 centimeter 3 times. So that's why I am writing 3 times and I am getting the answer. How easy this paper is? Same question they are asking twice. But the thing is that if you have the idea, if you learn things in a correct way, you can think in a correct way, you will actually identify that okay, this is the same thing. But otherwise what will happen? You will solve both the questions separately and waste the time, right? Question number 84 now. In a circle where center is O, AB is a diameter and CD is a chord which is equal to the radius OC. So chord length is nothing but the radius. AC and BD are extended in such a way that they intersect each other at a point P which is exterior to the circle that means outside the circle. What is the measure of angle APB? That's how this is going to look like. I have taken a chord and you know deliberately I have taken a chord which is looking very parallel to AB and the reason is very same right. They are not saying anything about the position of CD. It is a chord which is having length equals radius right. So I have taken a very symmetric diagram so that it benefits us. Ultimately answer will be same whatever position you take does not matter right. Let us see right how this can be done easily. Now if you say this is going to be equal to these values this clearly becomes equilateral triangle. If this this becomes 60 degree I think nobody should have any confusion now that this remaining two values will be 120 degree divided equally means this also will be 60 this also will be 60. Now this radius this radius all right and if you join now these two values these two points I think you should again not have any confusion that if this is 60 
and this is isosceles triangle the sum of these two will be 120 giving you 60 60 each means equilateral triangle again this is again going to be equilateral triangle now if you extend this and this is going to meet somewhere at point p maybe looking like it will meet outside the screen but i am making it to meet meet here now you can clearly see if that is going to happen look at this triangle a b and if i call this point to be p in a b p you can say one angle is 60 this angle is 60 the third angle will also be 60 degree so you can mark it directly to be 60 degree the other way of thinking this actually let me tell you how and what this question is actually all about it is simply basically a question where uh, it is a circle and inside that circle it is simply a hexagon and that two regular hexagon like this okay this is what this question is all about and once you do this this is the center and you just join these points what you will find you will find this now clearly what has been done actually you have been given information about one of the triangles that this is equal to this and this becomes equal to this obviously and then all other values are actually removed in this hexagon all other values are removed you are given with this only one triangle and they are simply asking if this is actually extended then what will be this angle so you know you, you can easily visualize it that this is a part of the diagram that has been given and they are asking a particular angle that will be 60 degree for sure you can easily do it question number 85 two chords a b and c d of a circle with center o are intersecting at point P and if angle APC is equal to 40 degree then what is the value of angle AOC plus angle BOD let's see the diagram how it is going to look like this is the chord I have chosen AB and CD and they are intersecting at point P and it is saying angle APC is given to us is 40 degree and it is asking what will be the value of angle AOC and angle BOD that's what they are asking right then there is a property of the circle you know that that the chord is making certain angle at circumference so what it will make at the center right there is a property using that this question can be done it will take some time right maybe you are going to take 60 seconds some will take 50 seconds to get it but why not to get it in two seconds right because that's what you will you will love to right the mark the answer while you finish reading this particular question hardly it will take two seconds and you can mark the answer if you can think the way i am going to show it to you look this point P that they are talking about you will be de deliberately creating this point in the exam right I'm just asking you one question that a B and C D are the chords if they are the chords they can be any two chords it is not going to be something specifically they are saying that this is the particular chord it can be any two chords I can even draw this chord to be this and this no problem so what I can do then if that's it that is the scenario why not to choose two cards which are diameter also because if you do that something strange is going to happen if you assume your a b and c d like this to be diameter and if you do this actually this angle will be 40 degree and p and o will be at the same point then and you also know this that this is the vertically opposite angle 40 and 40 so you call it apc or you call it aoc this will be the same thing and 40 plus 40 will become 80 in this case and this has to be correct the reason is very simple because this aoc and angle bod it is going to give you a constant angle because all the options given are constant so if you mark any option by solving through any other approach maybe and you are marking suppose 80 degree what does that mean that any two chords you choose in the circle which is intersecting at certain point the sum of this angle and this angle will be equal to that much that's what i'm saying i'm choosing one special case where chord itself is the diameter both are diameter so what will happen 40 and 40 is 80 that's the answer that you mark it can never go wrong just think intelligently although they are telling you that p and o point are different but what does that mean they can be even same then also it will be a chord and it is not violating any condition understand it if you can think like that you can get whatever marks you want right it just depends that how how you are going to train yourself to think this way right smartly do not always go by the language and o and p if they are two different points you will be using two different points only right you can use the same point and which will depict p and o both they can coincide there is no condition a b still will be called a cd still will be a chord and you can easily get the answer now question number 86 a wonderful question but again i tell you that easy one you will be solving maybe in 30 seconds but if you are little aware of few things right you can even mark orally without even doing any actual calculation but i'll show you the both both methods right that how it can be easily marked 
The answer for this is going to be 2, that is 7 by 6. I'll tell you how you can easily mark it. The first general method, which is simply that, you know, equation is given, which is x into tan 60 root 3 plus cos 45, which is 1 by root 2 plus equal to sec 45, which is root 2. Then you can simply do one thing that you multiply with root 2 everywhere. You are going to get x into root 6 is equal to 2 minus 1, which is equal to 1. You will get x is equal to 1 by root 6. And therefore, x square plus 1 will be 1 by 6 plus 1 giving you 7 by 6. It is not a difficult calculation even you can do like that. But let me tell you without doing any actual calculation, you can mark it. First thing is certain if you say x square plus 1. I mean 1 plus something is given, right? And that too something cannot be negative. x square cannot be negative. It can be 0 or more. What does it mean that my answer should be more than 1? Look at the option 5 by 6, not possible. 1 plus 6 square can never be 5 by 6, cannot be less than 1. 6 by 7 is not possible, right? Then you are left with two values, which is 6 by 5 and then here it is 7 by 6. If you look at the expression, in this expression, you are going to get terms involving root 3 and root 2. These are the two kind of terms you will get, except x. If you forget x, other values will give you either root 2 or root 3. Now, if somehow you choose this option, now out of these two, one option is correct. If you choose this option, then 1 plus x square you are calling to be 6 by 5 or 1 plus 1 by 5. Now, clearly you are saying that x will be 1 by root 5. If you at all bring x to be 1 by root 5, then what will happen? The root 5 will never go away. It will be there itself. It will not allow the cancellation that you are looking. Okay, because you are going to find that this left hand side is equal to right hand side. Right hand side is involving only root 2. Left hand side is having root 2 along with here it is having root 2, but here it is having root 3 as well. So if you bring root 5 along with root 3, what will happen? Left and right side cannot be equal then. The only possibility to make them equal is that bringing element, right, which allows you to convert a root 3 into root, then only some relationship can be made. And therefore, you cannot have the choice of taking x to be 1 by root 5, x square to be 1 by 5. That's why the answer here will be only that here it will be 1 plus 1 by 6. So x can be 1 by root 6. And when out of these two options, only 1 was correct, b was the obvious choice. You can avoid this kind of even calculation for solving this. But anyways, what you prefer, you do it. Question number 87. It says that it is given that x plus y is less than 90 and both are acute angles. Sine of something, cos of something, they are equal. I think you all know that if it is going to happen, sum of these two is equal to 90 degrees, right? If I say that sine A is equal to cos B, right? So you know that here A plus B will be equal to 90 degrees, right? Getting my point or not? There can be other cases as well, but this is one of the cases where this becomes equal. I have to find what is the value of tan X plus Y. So if you just sum these out, 2020 will get cancelled and you are going to get twice of x plus y is equal to 90 degree, right? Because I'm summing this and this and making equal 90 degree. So x plus y clearly will be equal to 45 degrees and answer is one. Extremely easy question, but don't raise the pen for solving it. Question number 88 is a very interesting question, right? Interesting in a way that, you know, terms are looking too big. A square sec square x minus b square tan square x is equal to c square. Then what is the value of this? And I, if I tell you some bookish method, right? There is no benefit of watching this lesson, right? Let me tell you the smartest method to solve this question. First is that, look, they have placed certain condition, which is b square cannot be equal to a square. So I cannot put a is equal to b, something, but don't worry. I dislike c. What I will do with the c, right? It is a variable. And it is a variable I can put c is equal to 0 because that's not violating any condition. If I put c is equal to 0, then what will happen? My options will be simplified. So first task I'm going to do is putting c is equal to 0. So this term will be 0 in all the options. It will lose its relevance. That means it will have no role to play then. Gone. After I do this, then I looked at this expression what I need to calculate. So I will say this is sec square x plus tan square x. I also know this that sec square x is 1 plus tan square x. So essentially if I convert this, this expression will be 1 plus 2 tan square x. Or I think you all can easily say that this term will be more than or equal to 1. It cannot be less than 1, right? It cannot be less than 1 because it is 1 plus something. Now if you, if you look at the options that are provided, look at E option. If 2c square has already gone into the picture, this will be definitely less than 1 cannot be your answer. This is more than one can be your answer. But I don't know if other answers are also there, which will give me this is right. This is also clearly less than one because here again, numerator is less than denominator cannot be my answer. Here also the same picture is there. Now tell me please, what can I choose? 
only second one. The thing is that, are you thinking like this? Right, but if you can just identify this small thing, right, this question can be done orally even easier than any arithmetic question, right? Because even variables are making things very easy because we can choose the variables what we want. We first choose c is equal to zero, so this gone from all the options. And once it is gone from all the options, we are left with only a and b terms. And then I'm just giving you this, that sec square x will be one plus tan square x, giving this expression, overall expression to be one plus two tan square x. Clearly, it is going to be more than or equal to one. I mean to say there is only one option which is more than one and that has to be correct because all other answers are less than one giving b square minus a square divided by b square plus a square which is clearly less than one. That's how you can do things smartly and score whatever marks you want. Now question number 89 is something which it's few step process that you can easily get. It's very standard question though. Let's see how you are going to solve it. It is one plus sec 20 cot 70 20 and 70 and you can say 20 and 70 are making 90. So that's why let's convert everything into 20 first. So what you have to do if you have 1 plus sec 20, sec 20 can be essentially written as 1 plus cos 20 plus this will be equal to tan 20, right? Tan 20 degrees. So tan becomes again sin 20 by cos 20. I am writing this way into this is 1 minus cosec 20 will be 1 upon sin 20 and this particular value tan 70 is nothing but cot 20 and cot 20 can be written as cos 20 upon sin 20 right once this is done what you have to do just take uh, you know lcm and it will be sin 20 and cos 20 in the denominator just this question is requiring little few steps it can also be done little easier but for that i need to tell you some some special cases of trigonometry that I have not made any video on that so but also it, it is easy even with this process just few maybe two steps are required once you do this it will be cos 20 plus sin 20 plus 1 and here what you are going to get simply is sin 20 plus cos 20 minus 1 that's what you are going to get and since these are in product I have to write this way you can clearly see now if you take this expression and you call it x this will also be x. So it is x plus 1 into x minus 1 will be x square minus 1. I mean it will be ultimately equal to x square minus 1. So I am just writing x square first. x square is cos square 20 plus sin square 20 plus 2 sin 20 cos 20 minus 1. This is minus 1, right? x square minus 1 divided by sin 20 cos 20. You can clearly see now this 1 and 1 is being cancelled out and this is cancelled out you are getting. So this is the only question where you are doing something to get the answer. It's a two step process. Now question number 90 again is a very standard result and that if you do not know I must say that should know that expression that whenever this is given take tan square theta common and simplify it what you will get simply that sin square theta will be equal to cos to the power 4 theta. This is the standard result right so if you do not know you remember it that whenever tan to the power 4 theta plus tan square theta is 1 then sin square theta is equal to cos to the power 4 theta. Now cos to the power 4 theta you can put a sin square theta. It will become sin square theta plus cos square theta and that will be equal to 1. That's so simple right. Thank you all for watching the lesson. Goodbye.